2016 was a big season, of course. I was in great form through the whole year. First one I won was Papendal, really cool, of course, and then finished it up with two other wins in the US. Three out of five wins, well, that was pretty big for me. Oh, the season was awesome. Basically, that Olympic year, you want to come in and, and have your best year you can. So I went into Argentina, really prepared. That was cool to be able to go there and get that win, and then that confidence always, always kept me going fast, no matter what race I went to. The Olympic Training Center in Papendal, the Netherlands, played host to the first and second rounds of the 2017 UCI Supercross World Cup Tour. The training center sits just outside Arnhem in the middle of the beautiful province of Gerderland in the central eastern part of the country. The city hosted their first World Cup back in 2011 when both Mark Willers and Sarah Walker of New Zealand captured the men and women's titles respectively. Local rider and ex-world champion Nick Kimmon took a surprise win here in 2015 in his rookie year as an elite rider. First year I won here, it was kind of a surprise for me and I think for everyone. People start to expect more from you. I started expecting more of myself. I got used to it now and, you know, I'm just going out racing, having fun. Laura Smulders won here in 2014, again in 2016, and she's ready to fight for her right to keep her crown at the season opener. Feeling really great going into this World Cup at Papenau. It's my home track and always like to ride here in front of the home crowd. So I'm really excited to race and see what's going to happen on the weekend. I ended up finishing the season overall number two, and that was the best that I've ever done in the Supercross series. After Rio, I had this whole switch that I started really enjoying myself and enjoying just riding my bike again. And I found myself doing better because I, I, I'm not worried about anything. You know, I'm just, I go out and I, I'm gonna have fun. And if I do good, I do good. If I don't, I don't, you know, I tried my best. 2017 sees the introduction of a new World Cup format. The time trials are now gone and the qualifying motos have been replaced by round one. An exciting last chance qualifier round has now been added for riders who fail to qualify in the rounds. There's been so many times where I've had a day where, you know, I was going good all day and I made a small mistake. If that does happen, you do have a second day. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good weekend. Having two race days instead of one, I think relieves the pressure a little bit of coming out and having to perform. I think breaking it up into two days each weekend is going to be good. After a World Cup day, it's like, man, I am drained. So it's going to be interesting to see that, OK, now we got to do it all again tomorrow. And I want to do well at this track. I mean, it's top-notch facility. It's, it's going real fast, and we have a lot of racing to do this weekend. So what I'm going to do is have fun lap per lap and, and see if we can end up in the final. It's my home track. Won it before. Also messed it up a couple times before. So new weekend, new race. I just can't wait to race. I really want to get my first win, but obviously I just want to stay safe, stay healthy, and be happy with my outcome. On top of the box. <laughs> the track was rebuilt in 2016 as a replica of the Olympic track in Rio. As one of the longest tracks on the circuit, it forces riders to pace themselves to keep enough energy in the tank for one last push at the line. It's a technical track from the first turn to the finish. So you just gotta keep focused, just staying smooth. The track's the same as last year. It's big, wide open. The track is actually really smooth, it's fast. The first straight is pretty wide and open. You can really make some speed there. The race can be won down the first straight, hitting the triple into the first turn. I think that's gonna be huge. Everyone who ends up winning it generally is jumping the triple into the turn. Triple into the first turn, that's pretty a big key for us. I've won two other ones without jumping the triple, but it's easier if you do it. The track's really big, especially the second straight. You have to be really focused on getting the backsides and keeping the speed. The corner, they're big. Everything's super wide open, so there's a lot of passing going on. So you better bring your corner skills when you come here. On the third straight, it's a pretty hard straight to go full speed on. It's really key to just have a clean third straight. Do not make any mistakes and just keep up your speed. 
You can hit everything full speed. You don't have to back off no matter what. The weather here in Papandal is always a factor where windy conditions continue to challenge the riders at each of the events. The only part that gets tricky is when it's windy and Papandal is known for its wind. Back in 2014, riders had to deal with thunderstorms and then pouring rain in 2015. If the weather is going to stay like this, we can actually race each other instead of the track. 2017 is looking good though with blue skies and a light wind going into round one. Round one saw the introduction of the new race format with a surge of new riders starting their journey towards the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. The size of the round is dependent on the size of the field. The start of the qualifying saw 24 heats for the men and six for the women. The field is quickly cut in half with the top four going through to the single elimination rounds. The bottom four riders from each of the heats now go into the last chance round with the top four making it through to the single elimination rounds. Then it's a tense journey through each elimination round with the top four qualifying through. In heat six of the women's race, Mariana Pajon got a great gate start, but a smooth riding Brooke Crane overtook the Colombian on the triple going into turn one. In a sudden turn of events though, Crane lost control in the second straight, taking her out of the race. Felicia Stancil lost her rhythm on the second straight and was pushed into the last chance qualifier where she made it through. Brooke was really fast in the first straight and got me on the first turn and then um, I think it was windy on the second straight and she didn't really feel confident and crashed really hard. In heat one of the men's round of 32, Swiss rider David Graf got the whole shot with Yukiya Yashimura of Japan close behind. Graf overshot the triple jump landing hard on the asphalt and crashed out. He escaped with some nasty scrapes and his arm in a sling. Yashimura managed to avoid the carnage, but Thomas Uve of France wasn't so lucky. Heat 4 saw Tanner Sebesta and Corbin Chirot take charge of the heat as the American pair led the chase. After losing his momentum on the final straight, Sebesta then hit the ground and failed to qualify. The finish line straight caused problems for many of the riders, with Kai Waite also losing his rhythm and crashing out in Heat 5 of Round 16. With the day progressing and the field getting cut down, it was time for the women's quarterfinals. Quarter one of the women saw Laura Smulders snap hard to take the early lead. American Felicia Stancil struggled to find her groove on the first straight while Yaroslava Bondarenko tucked in behind Smulders for second. Stancil then failed to move up in the field and was knocked out of the race. We are here at the first World Cup of the season in Papenel and I'm looking for the race. I'm ready to compete with other girls and do my best in that race. New Zealand's Sarah Walker battled it out with Dutch rider Judy Bao on the second quarter final with both qualifying through. Camille Mir of France came in third with Russian Natalia Suvorova in the last qualifying spot. It started pretty bad with a crash in practice. Like, uh, my arm is injured, but I decided to, to race and just see how it goes. Australia's Lauren Reynolds had a bad gait in Heat 3 as former world champion Stephanie Hernandez stormed into Turn 1 with the lead. New Zealand's Rebecca Patch was riding well, but Nadia Priest jumped ahead in the third berm. Sai Hatakiyama of Japan kept pace taking third, with Priest earning the final qualifying spot. I just wanted to come here and do something different to have like a new motivation. And now we're here. I'm super excited to, to be with the national team again, to be racing World Cups, to be here in Papinola. Meryl Smulders got off to a bad start in Heat 4, taking her quickly out of the running. Olympic gold medalist Mariana Pajon staked a strong lead, followed by Simone Christensen of Denmark. It's obviously cut for elimination now. I'm just going to take it one race at a time and slowly, slowly build and, and you know, hopefully be ready for the last, come the last couple of races. In quarter one of the men's heat, Sylvain Andre got off to a slow start but managed to take a narrow lead into turn one. Olympic bronze medalist Carlos Ramirez and Brazilian Renato Resende tried to break through on the third berm, taking the inside line. It was close, but no luck as Bodie Turner from Australia hung on for the fourth. 
everybody's hungry, everybody wants to win. There's not a guy that gets on that hill that's like, man, I want to make the quarter and I'll be cool. I think everybody races to win. Quarter two featured an all-star battle between Supercross champ Corbin Chirac in lane four and current world champ Joris Dode in lane one. The American got the better gate with Dode losing traction down the start hill. Canada's Tori Nyhog shadowed Shira down the second straight as Dode worked his way back into third. You get top four all day in the old format, the new format, or any other format in BMX, top four all day will put you in the final, so it's kind of always the goal. Quarter three saw some early contact as Jeremy Smith and Federico Villagas bumped elbows coming out of the gate. Olympic gold medalist Connor Fields had a strong start to take the early lead, but Dutchman Dave Vanderberg pulled ahead on the third straight. Got out, had a smooth lap and no complaints, just keep ticking them off, we got a few more to do. I don't think I'm the greatest guy on the track or the greatest guy on the first straight or the greatest guy out of the start. I think I'm like a pretty all-round rider. You know, I just hope to be like top three of the first turn and we'll see from there. The Dutch army was out in full force in quarter four. Quill and Isidore of Great Britain got sandwiched by the Flying Dutchman when Antoine van Gent knocked the Brit out of the race in the third turn. Came across the line first, so got the first gate pick in the next round and yeah, trying to survive. After the men's quarters, it's now time for the women's semi-finals. I'm just gonna focus on doing good starts and smooth laps. Just focus on myself and have fun. Heat one, semi-final number one. A bad start quickly put an end to Stephanie Hernandez's quest for gold. Smulder straight to the front. Laura Smulder snapped hard to take the whole shot going into the first berm. Sarah Walker had a slow start as well from the inside lane, but quickly made up some ground on the second straight. Smulders, Walker, Bondarenko, one, two, three, looks like Reynolds in fourth. Jumping that first triple into the first turn really paid off for Smulders. Australia's Lauren Reynolds battled it out with Nadja Priest for the fourth position, but the German took the final spot. The official is Smulders, Walker, Bondarenko, and Priest. I really like to just have every backside and get, get speed out of it. And then, um, well, I think that makes it look easy, but it's not really easy. <laughs> I really like that track. It's fast, love the first straight, it's open. I did some really good laps, really good timing. I feel like it's coming. And I'm just, when I feel like me again, so I'm, I'm working on it. Mariana Pajon from Colombia, gate one, world champ, gold medalist, times two. With wins in both 2013 and 2015, Mariana Pajon showed her mastery of the course, jumping the huge triple into the first berm. Judy Bao also jumped the big triple as the pair both charged ahead. Pajon, Bao, Christensen, one, two, and three down the second straight. Ruby Huseman showed that she had the third straight dialed and made her way into fourth, passing Natalie Suvarova. Pahone and Bao getting the payoff for jumping that triple into the first turn. Simone Christensen of Denmark made it through in third. The official Pahone, Bao, Christensen, and Huseman. My goal was just to jump the first one. I feel confident. And I did a really good gate, and I jumped the whole first straight and just just wanted to do a hop lap. With the final eight women now decided, it was time for the men to battle their way through to the final. And there we see elite men heading up for the semi. That's my home track. I won it before. Last year I got semi, so I just want to make my way to the main and We'll see from there. If you make the final, anybody could win the race. It doesn't matter what gate you're in. And, and I've always believed that. So I come in with a fresh mind and, and to go out there and give it my all. Waiting for the call. Looks like we're official. 
Semi won saw Nick Kimmon and Dave Vanderberg jump out to the early lead, but Tori Nyhog made a bold inside pass in turn one to split up the Dutchman. Making a move into second. Kimmon was forced to the outside and Connor Fields filled the gap, sliding himself into third. Vandenberg looking strong, Nyhog in fields, three and four. Rencurl then fought it out with Bodie Turner for the final and fourth spot, but Turner made the cut. So Vandenberg, Nyhog, Fields, and Turner was the official. Semi number two. It's a stack field, you know, a uh, lot of good riders, so you have to be consistent on the gate on the first straight. I had lane one pretty much all day and pushing to the line to keep that inside line. I had good gates, good track speed all day. So yeah, the confidence was just better and better. Ready to go. In the second semi, Tuan Van Gent and Sylvain André got the best lines, taking them into first and second as they entered turn one. Dodé got stuck in the pack, but took the inside line on the first turn to work his way into third. Van Gent running away with it. Van Gent, André and Dodé. Jared Garcia crashed hard in the second berm, taking him out of the running. Kai Sakakabara and Tristan Kronk went head to head for the final spot with Sakakabara just squeaking it out at the line. Juan Van Gent, Andre, Dade, Sakakibara. The women's final featured a battle between the reigning Supercross champ and the Olympic gold medalist. Both Mariana Pahone and Laura Smulders have also won twice on this track and were ready to go. Judy Bao, she's been riding so well today. 89, the Russian, Bondarenko. She has a smile, she's happy to be there. Look at that. The 100 bike, the golden girl, Mariana Pajon. I'm just gonna do a really good gait and focus on my first trade, doing a really clean lap and fast. Lauren Smalders from the Netherlands. I'm feeling really good and I'm going very fast. Of course, I want to be on the podium again. I think I've got a good shot. So here we are, the elite women's final. They're off. Smulders makes the move. Pahone says, I'll let you have that for right now. Smulders and Pahone, one and two into the second corner with Bow in third. But it's the Russian, the Russian with the old school high and low moving over for that second place. But it's Smulders, the Russian, Bonarenko, Bow, and Christensen for the fourth. Wow. Smulders had to pass Pahone in turn one and then rode her way to her third victory on the storied course. I had a really good gate, the best gate of the day. I overjumped the first one, I overjumped the second one, and then I lost some, some speed. I was next to Mariana down the first straight, and she, she just got me off a little bit. I went so high on the first turn, and then Laura passed me like, like I wasn't there. It's a wide turn, so it's really hard to defend it. You gotta keep your insides uh, closed, but Mariana just left it a little bit open. I saw the gap and I was like, I have to go for it now, else it won't happen. I was really fast on the second straight and she left me like the room to pass her, but I, I don't know, something happened to me. I just didn't want to pass her and that was it. Like I was on focus. I came around the last turn and I heard the crowd go wild. So that gave me an extra boost. I was like, yes, got this one. I tried to just recover the last straight and didn't have speed, just tried to jump the first one and then horrible. No, no, no. 
after winning, I went back onto the last straight and they went wild again. It's just, it's an awesome feeling. The top eight men had fought their way through the heats to make their way into the big show, the main event. So we will take you up close and personal. Looks like number 49, Tori Nyhawk from Canada. I decided to pick outside in the main and give myself a clean shot down the first straight. Next to him is the Olympic champion, Connor Fields. Doris and I, we've been battling for the last three, four years. I think we, we both bring out the best in each other. Next to him is Connor Fields' teammate on chase, Joris Daudet, the world champion. I like to be consistent, to be up for every title that I, that I ride. We have the Dutch national champion, number 192, Vandenberg. Next to him is Sylvain André from Cavaillon, France. Two days ago I was missing something like in my head or whatever, like sometimes you can feel bad and turn a bad lap into a good day. And next to him is Tuan Van Gent, who just laid down one burner of a semi. Lane one, Tuan Van Gent. Waiting for the call. Out of the gate, looks like Sylvan Andre got out decently. But Connor Fields and now Vandenberg just pulling away. Vandenberg is just making it happen. Turner in third now. Vandenberg nice and strong through this third section. From the outside is the Frenchman, Andre. The camera says it's a photo finish, but Andre's feeling like he won it. Frenchman Sylvain Andre took the top spot for his first Supercross win. I had a pretty good gate. I saw Sylvain and Twam were a little behind me, so I got to the inside, got a whole shot. We jumped the first one, and I think we hit each other. And Dave was in the lead, so I was okay with that. I just lost some speed on the third straight. And on the last straight, my legs were just dead, and I didn't realize someone was real close. And on the last jump, I saw just a wheel coming next to me and just closer, and just for the finish line, he passed me. I was stoked to make the main event and got a second place. The Flying Dutchman had Dave Vanderberg get the silver with his first Supercross podium while Twan van Gent earned the bronze. Winning a World Cup, like, it was the first time for me and it doesn't happen every day even to the Sam and Connor and Mary, so it's special and it was even more special for me. Really happy that I won the first World Cup here at Pavanal in front of the home crowd on my home track. It feels amazing. Obviously, it's going to boost my confidence for the next race here, so I'm going to try to keep that momentum going. I'll keep this one as my best result so far, and uh, I'll try to repeat it. That's a wrap for the first round of the UCI World Cup from Papendal, the Netherlands. Next up comes round two and a chance for the runners-up from round one to fight for redemption. Sometimes you just have to realize, even if you are two times Olympic gold medalist, you're still learning and I just want to be the best I can be. Well, maybe we have the same final, maybe we have a totally different final. I'm just going to do my best and hopefully make it on the podium again. Okay, whatever happened next, I did it at least once. So you just can't do it again. <laughs>